we've done a lot of enzyme work where you're looking at increasing nutrition absorption and things like that. But as a side effect of that, you can also, by increasing um, calcium and phosphorus utilization, you can increase bone strength in the bird and increase their their leg strength, which would decrease lameness. Um, we can also look at those enzymes and things like how they're affecting gut health and physiology as that as well. So by just overall improving the health of the bird, allow it to better utilize that nutrition, um, the, the feed that we're feeding it, it can actually improve their welfare. Hello and welcome to the another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm our host, Pratima, from Mississippi State University. Um, and we are in another episode today, just to digging more into nutrition side and what are there in this industry. As a part of bringing different guests, um, today we have um, another guest in our episode, Dr. Gregory Archer. Greg Archer. Dr. Archer, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Yes, we are very glad to have you, and uh, we are looking forward for the next uh, few minutes to know about you and your research. Um, can you introduce to our audience uh, what do you do? What's your role? So I am a professor and extension specialist at Texas A&M Hair Life Extension and University. Uh, we have a couple names here. Um, I my role in extension is I mainly work with the poultry industry directly, and then also with small flock owners. Um, and then a little bit of youth um, activities as well. But my research end of my has been more focused on animal welfare, stress physiology, behavior, and then also pulling in nutrition. Um, I kind of look at my lab as focused as looking at internal and external variables and how they can affect bird health and welfare. So the internal aspects would be things like feeding different components and seeing how we can alter physiology or help with external um, factors by doing that as well. That's uh, that's great. Um, so when you talk about internal, I want maybe today we're going to dive a little bit on the internal aspect, which would be a feed additive. Uh, we're going to talk about, and um, I know you your lab produces, has been producing a lot of paper on that, publications on that. Um, we're going to learn today a little bit about what your lab does on the feed additive side of it. Um, how, um, how can feed additives be used to improve welfare? So there's a lot of different ways. Um, some of the ways I just kind of go down a list of things. Like so, we we've done a lot of enzyme work where you're looking at increasing nutrition absorption and things like that. But as a side effect of that, you can also by increasing um, calcium and phosphorus utilization, you can increase bone strength in the bird and increase their their leg strength, which would decrease lameness. Um, we can also look at those enzymes and things like how they're affecting gut health and physiology as that as well. So by just overall improving the health of the bird, allow it to better utilize that nutrition, um, the, the feed that we're feeding it, it can actually improve their welfare um, in that aspect. Then we've also looked at things like all the different things like prebiotic, probiotics, um, postbiotics, phytogenetics, all those different other compounds, all the antibiotic alternatives. Right. Um, a lot of those also can do things like that, but I'll, by improving the health, but some of those also have other um, other effects um, that we've looked at, things like changing behavior possibly um, because of when you're changing possibly the gut flora, um, you can also then influence the the, the, the brain through the, the gut brain axis there. Right. Um, been a lot of research in other species out there do, looking at that, but um, not as much in poultry, but people are starting to look at that more in poultry, but you can actually change that by changing the microbiota and that, and that affects their welfare possibly as well. Um, just kind of briefly about that, but, and then also looking at other just compounds, things like looking at, um, amino acids. So one of, one of the studies we've been kind of looking at recently and some other people have as well is, is looking at different ways to increase maybe tryptophan, um, in the diets and then see if that affects serotonin in the body. Um, recent, some recent research, we're actually going to, um, have, hopefully have a a presentation or a poster at the next um, IPSF about will be kind of looking at how we've seen what the blood levels versus brain levels of that when you feed tryptophan or maybe a probiotic that's supposed to also stimulate that in the gut and see if it actually transfers for the gut and how that affects behavior. Um, we did have a, a, um, some research we presented uh, like last year, which showed that when we did feed that tryptophan that we, you can actually affect some of the, the fear behaviors of a bird. Um, it kind of makes them a little calmer. Um, 
it's a little bit like the old thing where people talk about with humans when we eat turkey for Thanksgiving, like it makes us all calm and sleepy and stuff. <laughs> have some of that effect. There's been some anecdotal stuff also out there in the, um, I've heard from some people feeding it to breeders um, that have shown that the breeder pullets seem to be calmer. They say when they walk through the barn on the birds that are being head, fed higher levels of tryptophan. So it's possible there's ways to, they use nutrition to calm birds as well, so that can improve their their welfare as well if we're not having as much flightiness and worry about injuries. But there's lots of different ways of nutrition. Um, those are just some high points there that I've talked about. Oh, thank you. These are, sounds like you have a very exciting projects and all this stuff just to help overall the welfare of the bird. And uh, when you said amino acid and tryptophan, yes, I have definitely heard and maybe seen a few papers on that. Maybe we need more to prove. Uh, I definitely agree with what you said about tryptophan and serotonin levels and how we do affect. And then you're talking about behavior wise there. And then they will come, you can just have this component of the welfare. That's very exciting. I'll be looking forward to the poster or the abstract that you're going to present in IPP for sure. Um, that's amazing. So I'll, I'm just not focusing on that. Okay, yeah, you mentioned about you do a lip, different feed additives and then amino acids and the minerals um, in your, just to look into the welfare. Uh, what study that you have seen in the last five years that your lab does has been really standing out and you feel like this is a kind of a, a groundbreaking or this is a breakthrough for the industry or this is where you know have gotten has got a lot of traction I can even one or two research highlights I mean obviously when we, some of the enzyme work gets more picked by the nutrition people um because we've helped with companies developing new um new enzymes for the use out there um, some of the stuff that I've done that maybe isn't getting as much pick up by the industry, but I think should, is things, some of the stuff we looked at in heat stress mitigation through nutrition. So yeah. trying yeah. some different alternatives or even some stuff that people have actually done, looked at it and try and look at the mechanisms. Um, because I think sometimes we look at stuff and maybe not look at the other aspects that could be on. We may think, oh, this is just for, for this could help production gro growth, but they also may have effects on other things like heat stress susceptibility or the or resistance for that matter. Um, so we've done some stuff with looking at different things, some other natural products like seaweeds and other stuff. And I think some of those can actually be beneficial, possible via feed substitutes. We've also, again, we've done, I mean, I, my, on the nutrition end, I've been doing a lot of new enzyme stuff. So I think that's probably my most yeah. prevalent yeah. out there in terms of what's um, what's being cited. But even that stuff has some welfare implications because we have looked at like bone um bone strength and things like that in there to see that why we are still in phytase does all these wonderful things but it also does that um, but we also yeah. other stuff as well like how enzymes are affecting maybe possibly ammonia levels in the barn by the excreta how much nitrogen is being retained or not retained and those kind of things and also beyond also well for the bird but also environmental effects so i think those things are going to be more ways and pathways for people in the future to build on yeah absolutely absolutely Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. These are great things. Um, thank you for sharing. And I want to ask you maybe a last question. I know you kind of covered about all the nutritional aspects of what are they or that you we are as industry, as a university, as um, you know, overall industry, we're trying testing and we're going there. Uh, one thing, if you could just tell for audience, like what are these welfare measurements that you do when you go to the barn? It doesn't matter, a long lived bird like layers or a short lived like broilers or any others. What are the, some of these key components of the welfare that you, like I'm talking about method-wise here, what do you, what a few things you test when you walk into the barn? Yeah, so we're looking, you know, I mean, obviously we want to look at bird level indicators. It's hard to necessarily pick up everything for everything, but things we look at in ours, we are, I do kind of behavior and physiological measures in my lab, in our lab. So we're looking at hormone indicators, immunological indicators, um, we're also looking at the physiological of the birds, actual growth rates and things like that, and how much feed conversion, those things. But we're also looking at behavior things like fear and um, some other behaviors, like the other negative behaviors or positive behaviors that they're doing, those birds are doing, and seeing if we're changing 
even just general behavior in those birds as well because our activity or things like that because you can a lot of stuff we're not looking at i mean i we're talking about nutrition here but we also look a lot of my lab about lighting and things like that how we can manage right and that's also going to be interrelated with nutrition because lighting can increase or decrease feed intake and all those different things so um we look at a lot of different i try and do a more of a multifactorial approach where we're looking at lots of things to try and look at the holistic view of the of the animal and its environment um i know some other people focus solely on physiology or some people focus solely on behavior my lab kind of we try and integrate it all um to try and look at those kind of we're looking at leg health we're looking at foot pad dermatitis we're looking at gut health um in in the birds as well um again we're trying to put the whole picture together um and see not just okay we can improve gut health but if we improve gut health what's that doing to the behavior of the bird or what's that doing to the some other aspect of that bird's immunology are they diverting is it making it better immunology better immune function or is it could it possibly we're making these changes and we're seeing a positive here but a negative somewhere else so you got to kind of look at the big picture yeah absolutely and i think and yeah we should be i mean from this episode or we i would just make people understand that yes there is not we can we can have our, our core values in nutrition for example but uh, it's we cannot leave behind the physiology the bar what goes on with their gut health so i think as a whole industry we're trying to put together all the things together and making us still a sense out of that uh, study or what uh, new applications we do dr archer thank you so much for today for coming and sharing some of your um, exciting things that's going on and that has been in your lab um is there any last thing that you want to share with your audience we kind of covered everything nope i think we got it all and i you said i think you made a good point there i think kind of nutrition is important but it affects a lot of things and welfare is also very and of the bird is also very important so we need to see how those interact and i think a lot of researchers are more coming along those lines nowadays absolutely all right thank you again um thank you for coming so for those who are watching us today thank you for another tuning in for our another episode um i hope you learned something today we will be back again see you then thank you bye